Okay, now, so the shoulds in your head can make you feel bad about yourself. I should be getting this degree. You know, has anybody ever had that? You, you've been telling yourself you, you get this advanced degree and you've been telling yourself for like 10 years now, I should be doing it, I should be doing it, I should be doing it, and you don't have a date? Don't allow a should to be in your head unless you have made a commitment. Now, so I, I've got a flow chart for shoulds. Okay, so if a should comes in your head, I should be doing this. Take it seriously, listen to it. But the first question is, is action really required? A should is compelling you to action. You should be doing this. So, so we say, really? Should I really? And then you look at it and you say, no, I shouldn't. You make a decision. It's amazing how, we, how voices come up in your head. You've got the inner parent that's always telling you, you should be doing this, you should be better, you should be doing it. You don't need that inner parent anymore. You're an adult. Okay, so all those voices, you need to get rid of them. And the best way to get rid of them is just to get yourself together. And as soon as you hear the voice, you deal with it right then and there. Should I be doing it or not? Is action required? If the answer is no, is it important? If the answer is no, forget about it. Make a decision. I am not going to do this. And if the should ever comes back again, I know it's an invalid should. No, I shouldn't. Get rid of that voice. Work on getting rid of those voices. All right. If it is important, now the book talks about how to use the task it um, system for actually keeping track of ideas that you have or potential goals and things like that before you turn them into action. So for a long time, I was thinking about websites and things that I would, I would love to have a website on emotional intelligence, and I'd love to have a website on this. But I was so busy that I didn't have time to do it. So I would start collecting stuff. And in my task system, I, it's basically a way of journaling and keeping track of ideas. So I was going to build an emotional intelligence website. And this would be really great to put on that website. And I'd put it in there. You can put attachments. And I use a scanner. And I, I put things in there. But I haven't committed to it yet. And then as time went on, I realized, wow, it's just not going to be something I'm going to have time to do. So I hired my son-in-law. And, and um, he's now doing websites for me. And as soon as we sat down and started to put together the plans of what he's going to do, I go into all these ideas and goals that I never really had time to solidify and never scheduled. And I say, now I've got some more bandwidth. And let's do it. So we put project schedules together and schedule dates. And by the way, the emotional intelligence website is up and running. And we're doing all kinds of things. And OK, so, but it's really important for me to be able to incubate ideas. Instead of shooting on myself and saying, I really should be doing this site, I make a decision. No, I'm not. But I'm going to continue to monitor it as an idea. And at some point, I will turn it into a concrete goal with a date. And at that point, then I'm going to start uh, put a project plan and get it done. But there's plenty of room for ideas about things that you haven't committed to. Okay, then you can forget about it because you have a system for keeping track of those and you don't have to should on yourself anymore because you've made a decision that it's not an active project. Okay, now a should comes to you, you listen to it, is action required? Yes, this is something I'm committed to. I really need to get it done. So then the next question is, should I do it now? And if so, do it now. I've seen people that will procrastinate, and just the amount of time they're thinking about it, they could have gotten up and done it. I don't waste any time on that. Just get up and do it. And if you do it, then you can forget about it, because it's done. No more shoulds. But in some cases, it's just not convenient. At the time the should comes to you, I don't have time to do it right now. But I do have time to schedule it. So if you have a system, you can put it in. You can decide, like with the task it system, if there's one way of inputting it if it's a project, and there's another way of inputting it if, if it's a task. And that depends on how long it's going to take to do it, two hours or, or longer. And so you put it into the system, and you're basically scheduling. Maybe if it's a project, um, you don't know what the first task is going to do, so is going to be. So you put one task in the project, and the name of the task is Jumpstart. And you put a due date on it. And now you're done. You don't have to shoot on yourself anymore because you put it in your system and you're going to stay committed to all the things that you said you were going to do. But there's a date. That's the difference. Not I'm going to do it someday. I'm going to do it by the 24th of March. OK, so then if you look at the, the whole flow chart here, then this becomes a system for eliminating the procrastination habit. And this chart, flow chart that I showed you, showed you yesterday is a system for managing your emails. 
And what we're talking about here is systems and processes. If you want to become more productive, you need better systems and better processes, and you need to commit yourself to them. If you don't want to do that, then don't expect a different result. Otherwise, you're insane. Because if you plan to do things the same way that you have, you shouldn't expect a different result. So you don't have to do all the things that we're talking about today, but even if you pick up a few of them and bring a little more discipline to yourself. And by the way, that is important if you're going to be leading other people. It's just like Kathy was saying yesterday. If she has one of her people and they've got this horribly mess messy desk and she feels I need to coach them or talk to them about it and then she looks at her desk and says, hmm, maybe I should clean up my desk first and then have the coaching conversation. The reason that you do that is because you realize that your credibility is at stake. We are leading by example. And I think that we all, if we expect our people to be more reliable and more accountable. There's it's, it's one word that I hear a lot when I do leadership training is accountability, accountability. We need more accountability around here. Where does accountability start? With you. Make yourself accountable. And that's what this is about. So, okay, so in, in this whole concept of breaking the procrastination habit, it's important to bring awareness and discipline to all your actions. You need to be aware of when you're procrastinating. Say, so right now, I'm in the act of procrastinating. My basal ganglia is actually taking charge and habitually doing what it does, which is procrastinating. I'm going to bring that to the forefront of my thinking, and I'm going to make a decision, and I'm going to follow the new process. 